Welcome to Intro to Adobe Animate 2021. Let's pick up our pens and get to animating. Tip tot. Hello everybody and welcome back to Tipta and welcome to Intro to Adobe Animate 2021. This series will break down step by step how to make an animation in Adobe Animate. At the end of this series you'll have your own animation complete and be equipped to handle all the basic aspects, tools and features of Adobe Animate. I recommend you have a drawing tablet to follow along with this series and I've recommended a few good beginner options in the description. Without any further ado, let's get right to it. Part 1. The Absolute Basics so, what even is Adobe Animate? Well, it started its life back in the day as Macromedia Flash before it was bought by Adobe and eventually rebranded to Adobe Animate. It's used for making animations, interactive web content using ActionScript before and HTML5 now, and Flash games. In this series, we'll go over the animation side of Adobe Animate because frankly, I'm an animator, not a game or web developer. If you want to follow along specifically and replicate the animation I made for this tutorial, you can download some sample files from my website, tiptart.xyz, to get you started. But these techniques can be applied to your own similar animations, and I encourage you to make something of your own, because trust me, you'll love it much, much more. Okay, let's get on to using the interface and the absolute basics. Okay, so here we are inside of Adobe Animate, and I've got our sample project open here. As you can see, or hopefully you will be able to see soon, it's not actually that complicated. There's only a, a few layers, uh, a few tweens, and a few frame by frame bits of animation in here. So what I'm gonna do today is take you through the interface and we're gonna start our animation by drawing the bouncing ball body of our character here. And then in the next episodes, I'll take you through piece by piece um, the techniques I use to create this. I'll show you a technique in an isolated, simple environment. Uh, and then I'll show you how I applied that technique to this particular animation. Hopefully that way you'll be able to learn how to do your own animations as well as recreate this one if that's what you want to do. Okay, so I'm just gonna close this project down and yes, I'll obviously save the changes to it. Uh, and when you first open up Animate, you'll be confronted with this kind of window here, okay? Now for animation, you just want to click Create New. That's gonna open up a window with all the uh, document settings that you need. Might take a second. Um, by default it's on character animation which is what you want to leave it on. You can see you have all these different tabs based on the things you want to make. I'm going to make mine a square so it's going to be 1080 by 1080. I'm going to leave the frame rate at 24 frames per second because that's kind of the default for animation. Platform type is going to be Action Script 3 because we're not making a HTML5 canvas and Action Script 3 allows you to have all of the filters and settings you might need for animation. So let's cl click Create and it will open up a new document for us. Okay, so here we have our interface. Uh, this large white section in the middle is our stage. This is where all the action in our animation is going to take place. If you want to change any of the settings, you can just right click, choose Document and that will change any of the settings you made when you first started, just in case you did it wrong, including the background stage color if you find white too distracting. Holding space will allow you to pan by clicking all the way around your stage. You have some other controls up here as well, which allow you to zoom, fit to window, show frame, which fits to window, but then allows you to pan around, okay? Um, you also have the, the center stage button, the rotation tool, allowing you to rotate your canvas, and your clip content. So turning this on or off will um, hide any content outside of your frame, okay? On the left here, you have your toolbar with simple things like selection and free transform tools. So the selection tool will move anything that you draw. For example, if I draw an oval, I can select the oval and move it around. The free transform tool will allow me to scale and squish that oval to my heart's content. The lasso tool will allow me to select portions of it in order to delete them or whatever. Um, the Puppet Pin tool, the Asset Warp tool, sorry, we'll go into a little bit later maybe, but essentially what it does is allow you to select an item, place pins in that item, and then warp that item uh, using those pins. Okay, so if I were to place a few of these, I can then squash and stretch that item to my heart's content. A little bit complicated that one, but we might go into it later. Then you have your various types of brushes. You have your fluid brush tool, which is the new updated brush with lots of property settings over here. We'll get to that in a minute. You have your basic brush, brush tool, which is kind of the classic brush within Adobe Animate. Um, so you can see there's not much difference on their basic level, apart from some nice neat tapering effects and things like that. 
Pencil tool does the same thing apart from it draws with an actual line. And then you have your various shape tools, squares, circles, polygons, etc. Then you have your line tool, which draws straight lines. Just skipping through these because they're kind of obvious, right? Text tool will allow you to type. The eraser tool will allow you to erase, believe it or not. The paint bucket tool will allow you to fill an area. So if you press the paint bucket tool there, you can fill in an area completely. The eyedropper tool will allow you to pick a specific color from your stage and that will turn your brush to that color. Then you have the camera tool, the rotation tool and the zoom tool, which we will get onto in a lot more detail later on. Just going to select all of that and delete it. If you don't see any of these tools, you can click the three dots down here and that's going to open up your extra tool options and you can click and drag those tools onto your toolbar like so. Okay. So over here in the properties panel, it will show whatever properties you have for the particular tool that you've got selected. Um, for example, you can paint normal or paint behind the, the lines you've already drawn with the brush, uh, paint any sections you have selected, but don't paint anything else, all that sort of thing. Uh, you can change size, minimum size, smoothing of your brush, etc. Okay, all these things we're gonna get into in detail, obviously, as we use them. I'm not gonna bore you by sitting here and explaining all of these details now. Um, but suffice to say that obviously, depending on the tool you select, it's gonna bring up different options for you. It's important to note, however, that there are several tabs, okay? So if I draw something on the stage using my mouse and I select it, I can go to the object tab, which controls things that are on the stage. This is interesting. I have a, uh, with my, my brush tool, I've obviously had object mode turned on there, which means that when I draw something, it turns it into like an unmanipulatable object. Um, if you have that turned off when you draw, it will turn it into a uh, editable, selectable brush selection, but we'll get, in, we'll get into that. Um, for example, so if I draw something on the stage, my object menu comes up. I can also select the frame menu, which is to do with the timeline, which we'll get to in a second, or I can select the document properties. So this is basically where you'll spend most of your time when you want to manipulate stuff inside Adobe Animate. Okay. As well as the properties panel, you have your library panel. Okay. And your library is where everything, all assets related to your animation are stored. For example, if I go to my um, Windows Explorer here, I have this sketch that I have created uh, in the previous episode, which if you haven't watched was just about um, creating up ideas and coming up with ideas. If I drag and drop that into my library, you'll notice that it appears inside the library. I can then drag and drop that from the library onto my stage as many times as I want. And any changes I make to this item in here will uh, update and reflect whenever we um, place it on the stage. So I can just delete those. So um, we're gonna use this as an example to explore the timeline. For example, if I drag this onto my stage here, uh, and go back to my properties panel. You'll notice that I can, um, using my align window, align this to the center of the stage. Pressing Q to bring up my free transform tool, I can drag and stretch it until it fills my canvas and it will snap to the edges of my canvas there. You'll also notice that when I dragged it into my stage, my timeline changed a little bit. And I'll just do it again to show you. If you watch this dot down here, it's gone from an empty gray to a filled in gray with a black dot. Now those are the two frames styles that you're gonna see most often. Empty gray means nothing is in that frame. Dark gray with a dot or dark gray means there's something in that frame. Now this down here is the timeline and this timeline basically shows your animation, okay? You'll notice all of these different colored gray boxes here, um, but essentially you can add in several layers so you can work on different layers in your animation. So for example, I could rename this one sketch, okay? And on the top of this, I could rename this one rough. And on top of this, I could rename this one clean. Okay, and now I have a layer for drawing all of my rough drawings and I have a layer for drawing all of my clean drawings. Now, the way you work in Adobe Animate is there are two types of frame. There is a frame and there is a keyframe. Now a keyframe is uh, anytime your drawing changes, no matter how you manipulate it, you will need a keyframe to tell it what the new drawing will look like, okay? And a keyframe has this black dot in it. If I press F5, if I just select a bunch of frames and press F5, that's going to insert new frames. You can also right click and choose insert frame. You'll notice these frames do not have dots in it. And what this means is as we go through our timeline, the shortcut for which is just pressing enter to play, you'll notice that there is no animation going on at all. Okay. If I just choose a frame at random and I press F6 or right click and insert keyframe. Okay. 
I can move or animate or redraw something. And as soon as our animation hits that point in the timeline, it's going to animate that. Those are the two types of frames that you use in Adobe Animate to animate. Okay. So I'm going to clear that keyframe, which gets rid of it there. And uh, what I'm going to do is just on my roughs layer, I'm going to draw or animate what I think this bouncing body is going to look like. And we're going to start off really simple by just doing a circle. Okay. So I'll explain a little bit more about this in the next episode. But if you select your background image here and go to um, your uh, library, you can press F8 with the image selected and that will turn it into a symbol. And I'm just going to call this sketch. Now, don't worry, episode two deals with symbols in complete detail. But what this allows to do under our properties panel is change the color effects on this symbol to alpha. And that allows us to drop the opacity of it. So it's not quite so distracting when we're drawing on top of it. I'm going to lock the background layer by clicking lock here. And on our roughs layer on the first frame, I'm going to get out my uh, pen tablet here. And I'm going to press B to bring up my brush tool and I'm just going to start drawing. OK, so I want to make sure that my brush is the right size. So at the moment, it's a little bit thick. So I'm going to go over to my properties panel here and I'm just going to change the size down to about 10. And you'll notice that it changes the minimum size. And that basically means that if you've got pressure sensitivity, what's the thinnest line it's allowed to make? OK, so control Z will undo, which is going to be really useful for you. And you can zoom in, like I said, and pan around as well. So I'm just going to draw a rough circle that's been squashed on the ground. Like so. OK. Now we are going to draw this body as if it was just a circle bouncing up and down. So uh, I'm going to move over a couple of frames and the shortcut for this is um, comma and full stop. So full stop moves you forward, comma moves you back. OK, there's a technique called animating on twos which means that you animate every other frame. So one, three, five, seven, et cetera. Again, we'll get more into that in the frame by frame details, but I just wanted you to uh, draw something in your first episode. I'm going to press F7 rather than F6 for insert new blank keyframe, which inserts a keyframe, um, but doesn't put any content on it. OK, now I'm going to draw my circle in a slightly different shape. But you might notice it's kind of hard to see what the previous thing looked like. So I can go down to my timeline options here and I can turn on onion skinning, which shows the previous frame. OK, now I'm going to go and draw this ball at its highest point, maybe something like this. OK, and I like that, but it's not quite center. So I'm just going to move it with the directional pad. Now we have two frames of our ball animating. OK, so I've drawn it at its lowest point, which I think I'm just going to use the free transform tool here to just squish and stretch it out a little bit because as it's hit the floor, it's probably going to in shape. Yeah. Now I've got these two keys. I'm going to go into the middle and I'm going to press F5 twice to move that other keyframe along. Then I'm going to press F7 to insert a blank keyframe in the middle. And you'll notice now I have a red shape and a green shape. The red shape shows the previous frame and the green shape shows the next frame. In the middle of that, I'm just going to draw the ball in the exact middle. OK, and I've squashed and stretched it a little bit because as uh, sorry, my phone there, because as um, it's falling out of the sky, it's going to stretch and deform itself. OK, and that's going to happen right in the middle of our animation here. So now we have three frames and we can see we can move between them. OK, but this moves quite fast. OK. And what we want this to do is to ease a little bit more. So I'm going to add in some more frames with F5. I'm going to press F7 on this side, and I'm going to do the same thing over here to give us two blank frames between our other frames. And I'm going to do something called easing. So um, what that's going to do is draw this frame here more towards the red shape than the green shape. So at this point, it's hit the floor, but it hasn't like started squishing yet. OK, um, I just realized I'm doing this backwards. So let's uh, this is it rising up instead. That's fine. <laughs> so now it's starting to come out and here it's going to start to slow down. As it reaches the top of its arc. OK, so now let's take a look at that. I'm just going to select these frames here and just click remove. 
Okay, so now we have our ball moving up, but that looks a bit silly. So let's select all of these keyframes, right click, choose reverse frames. Okay, if we then remove the extra, we've now got our ball falling rather than flying upwards. As our ball falls out of the air, it hits the floor, it squishes. Let's add in another keyframe so it can settle a bit. And these are just my roughs, so I'm not worried too much. So I can just, you know, press E for eraser and clean it up a little bit. Now we've got our ball falling and squishing. So let's add in one more where it starts to rocket back up into the sky. Like so. And let's add another where it's starting to resettle. And to make sure that it'll be a perfect loop, we can grab this first frame. Holding Alt, I can click and drag it over here. And I'll just add in an extra frame here. Um, which means that in this frame here now, we've got the first frame again at the end of our animation. So if I add in some more frames with F5, hit F7 to give us a blank keyframe, I can start to do the final bit of easing like so. Let's go back to showing the entire animation. And there we have our bouncing ball, okay? Um, so I want to see this in action over and over again to see if I like what it's doing. So I'm gonna come down here to my looping options and just turn that on. That's gonna give us this little blue bar, which if I drag out will allow me to loop the entire animation. It looks pretty good, but obviously it's hanging in the air for too long because we added that last duplicate frame. So I'm just going to remove those. And now we have our perfect bouncing ball animation. So there you have it. There's a quick, very brief intro to Adobe Animate's interface. Next time we're gonna go into proper frame by frame animation. And I'll explain what I did here in detail and we'll apply it to our character. We'll give him a head and some arms and stuff like that, okay? So thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this. Do make sure you've turned on the notification bell so that you can stick around for the next episode and get notified for when it is uploaded. Thank you very much for watching everybody and I'll see you next time on TipTap. I'd like to say a massive thank you to my level two and above members, Unknown Ghosts, WN62, Anonymous, Mel M. Hoover, Maybe Sharma, Ralika M, Month336, Ian Costello, Dushant Singe, and DaVinci Goel. Also, congratulations to Unknown Ghosts, WN62, and Anonymous for being members for three months. You lovely people. If you'd like to get exclusive perks such as shout outs at the end of videos, personal design feedback, discounts on merchandise, and access to the Discord, then consider clicking that join button below. for more tips, tricks, and tutorials. Thanks for watching.